You and know, now Elizabeth and- Smart is amazing. Yeah, she is. She's amazing. She's not only recovered, she's working with Operation Underground Railroad now to help stop slave... Sex slave Sex industry. slaves. Are you, are you, you're, I mean, because you've done obviously a lot of work on this particular cause to try to stop sex slavery, not only here in America, but all around the world. We just you, went to Haiti, just what, went to Haiti? a month and a half ago yeah. or so. I'm going to um, Uganda in a couple of weeks, Mexico, because it's connected to United States, and then back to Haiti this summer. But I'm, I'm, we're doing something with churches in Haiti that I talked to them last time we were there about in Haiti, some of the churches are actually involved in this slave trade. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And I call them, I'm going to say they're not churches if they're involved and, in this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's deep in the culture. And so when Pat and I were there, we talked to him and said, you know, do you know who the good guys are? And they said, yeah, the, the good guys are easy to spot because they're very outspoken on it. And so we're trying to get all of the good churches together. We bought a mountaintop. I guess they broke land on that or broke ground on that mountaintop. Oh. So um, when we were there. For another home for the for the girls who've been rescued from the sex slave. Yeah. They, they, need, they a, need more space. And they found a beautiful space where they're they're going to build a, a house for them. Yeah. To, to and it's a, it's a place. It's more of a campus. They can't leave until they're 18. And a lot of these kids. And are, they have to be protected because a lot of these sex slave traders try to come back and, and kill them and kill them because they're so testifying they against, testify against them. Testify against them. So it's a it's it's tough. So I'm going to Bangkok next week. That's got to be a hotbed of this, right? Isn't that like It is the, the worst I think it's in the, the worst world. in the world. Haiti and uh-huh. Bangkok. I think Bangkok is number 1. Oof. And what's really disturbing about this is it's generally white European and American men and they go over for the sex trade. And I'm going to try to find the sunlight. And, uh, you know, I was, I was in a meeting last week, and we were going over, trying to storyline what we're going to do out there next week. And, and I said, uh, you know, one of the guys, Jason, said, you know, we've got to go in like Vice does. We've got to go into the worst parts, but we also have to find the, the best parts. And I said, we're like virtue, vice and virtue. Everybody's covering the vice, and we'll see that. And and um, but I want to show you some things that I know are there, and show you the virtue in it because the world is becoming a very very dark place. And if you took all of the slaves from the Western slave trade, so all of the slaves that for hundreds of years white people were involved in, and you totaled all of those slaves up. There are more slaves today than all of those hundreds of years combined. We had the Greek bishop in, our archbishop in today, earlier. And he was talking and trying to say thank you to all of the people who donated to the Nazarene Fund. And he was talking about how having to get, they would not be drawn into any kind of political conversation. Um, but he was talking about how important it is to get those Christians out of there because the women are being taken for sex slavery and then killed, talking about what's happening over in Europe. The same kind of stuff is happening over in Europe, where in Islamicist Sharia law, and there's a difference between a reformed Muslim, which is a self-reformed Muslim, and an Islamicist. And the Islamicist Sharia law, you can do whatever you want with a woman. And in fact, I was reading something last night in Bangkok, the, I believe the number, at least in one area, the number one sale of a sex slave is a white Muslim woman from the former Soviet Union. And they go up and they convince these people, come on down, we have a job for you. And then they trap them in prostitution Mm. and they'll do it with kids, you know, four, five and six years old. To give you the background to what your status, because I had just seen a, a PolitiFact did a fact check on Bob Corker, who mentioned the slavery number that you're talking about, um, and said he said 27 million people are currently in slavery. Um, there's a bunch of different estimates on this. Uh, as low as 20 million, as high as 45.8 million 
is the range um, of all the estimates. Obviously, something very difficult to track down an exact number on. I'm like, well, we have 18 in here. And like, no one says that. But uh, over the entire United States slave trade, of between 15, eight, uh, 1525 and 1866, in the entire history of the slave trade to the New World, 12.5 million Africans were shipped to the New World. 12.5 million. So they're saying 20, between 20 and 45 million today. And then between 1525 and 1866, there were 12.5 million. It's really million. hard to believe, isn't it? It's hard to believe. Yeah. And it, well, especially since be- nobody talks about it. It's hard to believe because we are so silent. Yeah. But as we were looking at this, how do you make this something where people want to talk about it? I, I don't. Pat, we were there and it broke our heart. And what do you yeah. do? What do you do? And most places will pull the kids out, but then they go right back into it. And that's the difference with OUR. I, please check out. If you care about this at all, go to OUR.org. It's interesting to note that they said that when they use religion as a component, when Christ is as a part of this uh, recovery program, I think they said the recovery rate is about 80 to 85 percent. And when they don't, it's 15 percent. Yeah. Mm. So in fact, if they I'm don't gonna introduce use you. This, this spirituality in this, you've, you've got very little chance of next, getting out of it. Next week, I'm going to go to, and I can't show any of the faces or anything else, but I'm going to a place to where these kids, these boys are taken. They're pulled off the streets, and they're taken to a place that OUR set up, and this audience helped pay for, and it's run by Buddhist monks. And Tim Ballard, who runs it, he said to me, Glenn, I have to introduce you to the head guy. I said, okay, I'd love to meet him. And he said, he pulled me aside last time I was there. And he said, listen, you gave me this Bible and I've been reading this Bible. And he said, I want you to know, and you can't say this to any of the other monks, but I think I'm Christian. He (laughs) said, I'm using all of these principles in the recovery for these boys. And without the teachings of Jesus, it would not be possible. Hmm. I mean, it's it's some there's some really miraculous things that are happening and we want you to be involved. It was so funny when we told the head monk and we pointed out that guy, that guy over there is Christian. Yeah, <laughs> he they was beat him to death with yeah. canes. Yeah. It was yeah. great. It was great. <laughs> but he um, to, to clean up this the issue before we leave, Charles Ramsey was the guy in Cleveland who uh, went next door and saw this. And of course, his his famous quote, I'm eating my McDonald's. I come outside. I see this girl going nuts. I knew something was wrong when a little pretty white girl ran into a black man's arms. So, something is wrong here. <laughs> Dead giveaway. So great. So great. Class off.